Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the operation of FM radio transmitters. Now, these are telephone FM radio transmitters, so they hook up to your telephone line, and they'll broadcast both sides of a phone conversation to the FM broadcast band, which has a frequency range of 88 to 108 megahertz. Now, these are very simple oscillators. It's just an LC oscillator. There's your L component, and there's your C component. Now, that's, that's a tank circuit that determines the frequency of the, of the transmitter. So this is a one transistor modulator and oscillator. Now this one here is a different design. It uses a dual gate MOSFET for the oscillator and a Veractor diode to modulate the oscillator. Now these, both of these designs go in line to the phone line so it gets its power from the phone line so you don't need any external batteries. And when the phone is lifted off hook it will energize the transmitters and then when the phone is put on hook uh, the transmitters will shut off. Now these FM transmitters are not as stable as a crystal controlled oscillator so any body capacitance, if you put your hand uh, near the tuning uh, components, you'll actually detune it. It's not as good as, say, like a crystal modulator, like this one here. This is a little um, crystal-controlled FM radio transmitter. So there's your tuning slug to tune your center frequency. And then you have your pins here for your power, uh, your modulation audio input, and your RF output. Okay, this is how you connect the radio transmitter to the phone line. So this is my phone line here. This end here goes to the actual phone line, the phone jack on the wall. This end here actually goes to the phone set, the telephone set. Now I've cut one of the phone lines, either the tip or ring line, and you can see it here. Here's one lead, here's the other lead. Now the radio transmitter goes in series, so it goes in between these two leads. So the current loop of the phone line will come down one wire, through the radio transmitter, and then back out the other wire, so it gets its power uh, from the current loop. It also extracts the audio information to modulate the transmitter. Okay, I have my radio transmitter connected to my phone line. Now it's connected in series with one of the lines, either the tip or the ring. Now when I lift the handset off the phone, I'll get loop current and it'll actually power the radio transmitter and extract audio to be transmitted to the, to the FM broadcast band. So if I lift up the handset off the phone and go off hook, you can see it powers up and when I put the handset down, it powers off and it'll send all the audio from the handset. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. So long as the handset is off, it's going to be transmitted continuously until the handset is replaced on hook and the power will be removed. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the FM radio transmitter. And if you look on the very left, you can see the phone line and you can see one of the lines is cut. And that's where the FM radio transmitter is connected in series to the line. Now we shunt a 220 ohm resistor across the cut line to give current to the phone set so the phone will work properly. Now when the phone goes off hook and we get current flowing through this loop, we'll get current flowing through the 220 ohm resistor and we'll get a voltage drop across the resistor. Now that voltage drop is what's going to power this circuitry. So this bridge rectifier ensures the polarity will always be correct no matter how we connect uh, the two terminals into the phone line. So we'll have plus on the top bus and minus on the bottom, and that'll power this whole circuitry. Now on this DC voltage, we're going to have an AC component. That's going to be the voice or the audio. That's going to be fed through this capacitor into the base of this transistor, which will modulate the oscillator. Now this transistor is, an, is a coal pits oscillator, so basically it's an amplifier with positive feedback. So we have an LC circuit, our tank circuit, and we, t we take a bit off the inductor and we feed it back into the, into the emitter and that's our positive feedback and that'll, that'll uh, cause this circuit to oscillate. It'll oscillate at the frequency of the LC components in, in the collector circuitry. Now as the audio comes into the base it's going to frequency modulate the carrier frequency and it's going to deviate plus above and below the center frequency which will give us a frequency modulation. Okay, I have a modulation meter monitoring the output of my FM radio transmitter. Now this meter will display how far the carrier frequency will deviate above and below the center frequency. Now the full scale reading on this, on this meter is 60 kilohertz, that's plus or minus 60 kilohertz deviation. Now if I pick up the handset of the phone and energize my, uh, my FM transmitter, the dial tone will give a deviation about 35 kilohertz, that's plus or minus 35 kilohertz it's going to deviate above and below the center frequency. And as the audio level increases, so will the deviation. So if I pick up the handset, it will hear, it will hear the dial tone. And if I talk, you can see 
as the level goes up, we get a higher modulation. If I take away the audio, it goes to zero. And as I speak, you can see the higher the audio level, the higher the deviation of the transmitter. Okay, here's a diode equivalent circuit of an NPN transistor. So here's our base, collector, and emitter. So between the base and collector, we have a reverse bias diode. And between the base and emitter, we have a forward bias diode. Now a diode is just a PN junction, just a bit of silicon that's been doped with some impurities. And we could dope it to make a P material and N material. And we put them together, we have a PN junction, which basically is a diode. Now when we forward bias a PN junction, the depletion zone in the middle will narrow, which will enable current to flow in the forward direction. Now when we reverse bias a PN junction, the depletion zone will widen and let very little current flow in the reverse direction. Now also when we reverse bias a PN junction, we get a capacitance between the P and N material. So the P and N is, is basically like the plates of a capacitor, and the, and the depletion zone becomes a dielectric. So as we put a, a reverse voltage on the PN junction, we can control the capacitance between the P and N uh, uh, material. So basically we have, we have a voltage control capacitor. Okay, between the base and collector of the transistor of the Colpitz oscillator, we have a reverse bias diode, and there's, there's a, a capacitance across that diode which is controlled by the audio that's coming into the base of the transistor. So as the audio comes in, it's going to vary the capacitance between the base and the collector. And that capacitance is basically across the tank circuit, which will frequency modulate the oscillator, which will give us FM modulation. Okay, now you know how these little FM radio transmitters work. Uh, they're very easy to build. I just built this on a Vero board. And all the parts are easy to get. And this one I get a range of about 1,000 feet. So they're kind of fun to play around with. And this type is the in-circuit type. And there's other type that go across the line, like this one here, but you need your own 9-volt uh, power supply. There's other variations where you hook up a microphone circuit into here, so you could drive it with a microphone instead of uh, hooking it up to a telephone line. So next time you're online and you see these simple FM radio transmitters, now you know how they work.